All right, and thank you for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. How are you? My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host. Appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to tune in for a few minutes and watch the show. I've got a few stories that I've been following this week to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. So let me get right to it. First story, I'm going to talk about Hyundai. Um, they're coming out to replace a lot of the Kona electric batteries. There's a recall going on now of about 82,000 of their EVs globally to replace a faulty battery pack. Uh, the recall will include 7, 75,000 and change uh, Kona electric models as well as 5,700 Ionics and 300 or so city buses. They're all being recalled. Now the recall effort is expected to cost about $900 million US for Hyundai, which will make it the most expensive electric car recall ever. All of these vehicles use battery cells produced by LG Chem, and Hyundai is reportedly in talks to split the cost of the recall with its battery division, LG Energy Solution. According to South Korea's Minister of Land, Infrastructure and Transport, some or all of the faulty cells were made at LG's plant in Neijing, China from July 2017 to July 2019. The recall follows one announced last October in which Hyundai upgraded the battery management software and in some cases limited the maximum state of charge to 90%. In the US, that also involved a physical inspection of the pack at dealerships and an advisory to park the vehicle outdoors and or away from structures until they could fix the remedy. More than a dozen Kona electric models internationally have caught fire, which isn't really much when you think of the whole planet, although none have been reported in the US, and I think there might be one in Canada if I remember last year. Hyundai Motor America confirmed that the battery pack replacement effort includes both US and Canadian vehicles. Now equivalent Kia models, including the Kia Nero EV and the Kia Soul EV, which are cousins of the Kona electric, are unaffected by the recall. They use battery cells produced by rival South Korea battery supplier SK Innovation, which last year boasted that in 10 years of supply, its cells haven't had a single fire incident. Hyundai is working closely with NHTSA or NHTSA and Transport Canada on the recall and will communicate the details to affected customers shortly. I hope they solve this issue and move forward quickly, and I'm sure that they will. Now, sticking with Hyundai on a more positive note, it's been a busy week for them as they finally revealed the new Ionic 5 all-electric CUV, a fantastic-looking vehicle that is larger than the ID4 and just a shy in size of the Model 3. According to Hyundai, its 3 meters or 118.1 inch wheelbase is the largest one among electric cars. The Tesla Model S has a 2.96 meter or 116 and a half inch wheelbase, for example. So I guess they're right. Now staying with dimensions, it has uh, the Ionic 5 has a height of a uh, 1.61 meters, 63.4 inches, and is 1.89 meters or just under 75 inches wide. And its trunk holds about 531 liters, 18 and three quarter cubic feet of cargo. It also has a sizable frunk, which is the front trunk, if you're not familiar with that term, that will hold about 57 liters or two cubic feet of stuff. The Ionic 5 is the first product built over Hyundai's eGMP platform. It will have two battery pack options, a 58 kilowatt hour and a 72.6 kilowatt hour. Now, no range numbers were provided yet for the 58 kilowatt hour version. However, the 72.6, when applied with the all wheel drive package, uh, their stating would be able to reach about 470 kilometers, 292 miles, and 480 kilometers or 298 miles under the WLTP cycle. So a couple of different numbers there. So take a bit of that for uh, off for EPA. And I would guess that a rear wheel drive option of the larger pack size should push the 300 mile, 510 kilometer barrier, which is fantastic for range and single motor options might be even better. Speaking of motors, Hyundai offers four motor options for the Ionic 5. The one with the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack delivers 125 kilowatts or 168 horsepower in its rear wheel drive option. The all-wheel drive adds 53 kilowatts or 71 horsepower motor to the car, but the rear motor then loses 5 kilowatt, offering only 120 kilowatts or 161 horsepower for a total of 173 kilowatts or 232 horsepower. 
Now, for the 72.6 battery pack variant, the rear motor alone produces 160 kilowatts or 215 horsepower, and the all-wheel drive gets a front motor with 70 kilowatts or about 94 horsepower. And the rear unit loses five, so it all balances out to a total of around 225 kilowatts or just over 300 horsepower. Very, very nice. Now, torque ratings are about 255 newton meter for the front motor and 350 newton meters for the rear motor, which provides a total of about 605 newton meters or 443 pound feet of torque to propel the Ionic 5 from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour in about 5.2 seconds, close to 5 seconds, with a top speed of 185 kilometers per hour. Now, some of this may sound confusing, lots of numbers, so you can really go to the Hyundai's website and check out all the specs. They've put everything out there, including the power output and all that kind of stuff. Now, good thing as well as towing will be available, and they ha will have a rated capacity of up to 1,600 kilograms, which is just over 3,500 pounds, so very capable. Now, another first for Hyundai is that the Ionic 5 is based on a 800 volt system, which supports up to 350 kilowatts of DC fast charging. Yay! Early estimates state that a 10 to 80 percent charge can be had in as little as 18 minutes, so we're really getting to that sweet spot. There are all kinds of other options and tech on this vehicle, including 12 inch digital cluster and infotainment screens and a heads up display. The Ionic 5 is also their first vehicle to, to deploy Hyundai's next generation of their version of the equivalent to Tesla's Autopilot or Cadillac Super Cruise, the Highway Driving Assistant 2, or HDA2 as they call it. Now looking at all the pictures and video you've seen, it's a lovely exterior and, I, and really nicely appointed, especially that interior. It's got a nice roomy interior with excellent seats and all kinds of nice controls for that. I think Hyundai will have a big hit with this vehicle from a sales perspective. As long as it's priced competitively and it's available, meaning Hyundai needs to build lots of these, not just a limited number. If they do that, they should do well with this, especially if in fact, they do bring out this with a starting MSRP of below $30,000 US. That's rumored, it hasn't been confirmed yet, so stay tuned on that. Production is scheduled to start soon with first US deliveries set for the second half of this year. That may include Canada too, and we'll have to keep our eyes open for the rest of the world. Now, even though this class is heating up with competition like the VW ID4, the Tesla Model Y, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. There is lots of room for more OEMs to provide great all-electrics to the growing global marketplace. And I wish Hyundai the best of success with this new model. I really think they've have a hit here. Switching gears to Lordstown, you know, with all the hype with Tesla Cybertruck and pent-up interest in Rivian's R1T pickup truck, here is some more proof that the electric pickup truck market is going to be hot, hot, hot. Lordstown Motors Corporation has announced that they have pre-sold over 100,000 of their fully electric pickup trucks to various fleets across the United States. They are primarily going after the fleet marketplace. In case you did not know, the Lordstown vehicle is named the Endurance, and it has a stated range of nearly 250 miles or about just over 400 kilometers. Starting at around 52,000 US, this EV's main selling point is that each wheel has its own motor. Powered by four electric hub motors, each wheel will receive varying amounts of torque, and this will allow the truck to haul heavier loads. For the past 30 years or so, most fleets have been using roughly around a 17 mile per gallon pickup truck. Now looking at it all electric like the Endurance, which gets the equivalent of about 75 miles per gallon, this makes a lot of financial sense for fleets. So there is quite the demand and excitement is increasing. Lordstown hopes to start production beginning in September 2021, which may make them the first to market in this segment in the U.S. However, another well-known all-electric pickup truck and SUV manufacturer, Rivian, is also starting production this summer for anticipated fall deliveries. So we really will have to see who will be first out of the gate with the electric pickup truck. 
Now the endurance trucks will be made in a former GM plant in Lordstown, Ohio, which was purchased in 2019. The plant's goal is to make about 20,000 units for its first year, but they project that it will ultimately produce 600,000 units. I hope even more than that. So keep your eye on Lordstown. Jumping across the pond for a sec, there's a Spanish startup company called Lupa, and they announced a little while ago actually plans to bring their first electric model onto the road by 2023. The Barcelona-based company is planning a series of pretty low-cost EV models, with the batteries sold separately eventually. Their first model is the E26, has a range of about 400 kilometers and will be offered from 2023 or 2024 onwards at prices starting at about 17,000 euros with the battery that is worth about 9,400 euros and prices exclude tax and subsidies and all that stuff. Now the company envisions a future in which batteries can be sold separately. So when you reach the lifestyle, the lifetime of your battery, you can buy a new pack and get pretty well a new car. The E26 is a four, just over four meter long small car comparable to a Peugeot E208 or the Renault Zoe with its technical specs. Now the power output is said to be about 87 kilowatts and depending on the driving mode, the range should be between 320 and 400 kilometers according to WLTP specs. The EPA would be a bit less. Now Looper will offer uh, an 11 kilowatt onboard charger with their um, EVs, as well as DC fast charging capability. I'm not sure what the speeds are. The E26 would be sold exclusively online. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Now, just recently as well, Lupa announced its intention to build this model and other EVs in South America in the country of Uruguay. The factory is scheduled to go into operations in 2024 with an annual capacity of initially 20,000 produced and hopefully grow from there. Now, with a plant in Uruguay, the company says it wants to serve the entire Latin American market, but with a focus on the countries of the Mercosur community. Lupa has also stated plans for production at a plant in Barcelona, but it is now unclear if this and other EVs will be built there or in South America or in both plants. We'll have to see. Lupa does have plans for a couple of different all-electric SUV models as well, and they want to bring out an electric delivery van. Good for them, and I hope that they are successful. Now, my last story today is about a company called Redwood Materials. They have actually been around for a bit, but they recently just signed a deal with Envision AESC, agreeing to recycle defective battery cells and scraps. Now, Envision AESC manufactures batteries for the Nissan LEAF out of Smyrna, Tennessee in the U.S. And if you didn't know, Redwood Materials is owned by former Tesla CTO, J.B. Straubel. His company supplies auto companies and battery makers with raw materials that can be used in EV batteries. As EV productions increase around the world, vital minerals are in high demand, and some of these minerals and metals include cobalt, lithium, and nickel. Now, it's projected that over the next decade, there will be a need for about a million and a half tons of lithium, a million and a half tons of graphite, and about a million tons of battery-grade nickel and over half a million tons of battery grade manganese. I did get that right. In addition, the lithium ion battery demand in the United States was 43 megawatt hours in 2019. And by the end of this decade, the demand will increase to 482 megawatt hours, over 10 times as, as much. Now, currently the world produces less than a third of the key materials that EV companies need. So, to support the automotive industry, companies will have to rely on recycling batteries as a new source. So it's great to see more of these kind of companies popping up and opening. I've talked about a bunch of them in Europe already, and one coming to Canada, around the globe, and we're going to need them, so good on JB Straubel. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in, watching me on YouTube. Please throw a comment, like it if you'd like. If you haven't subscribed, please do tell a friend about it. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I'm on Twitter, Twitter, excuse me, at EV Rev Show. Uh, most of my stuff comes out of there. So if you want to follow me, please uh, hook, hook up on Twitter and follow me there. Of course, I'm always humbled by my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Thank you very much. It's always very much appreciated. And if you want more information, check out the link and you can you're interested you can participate of course my psa continue to please fo uh, follow public health guidelines to stay safe 
Uh, you know, vaccinations are starting to ramp up around the globe. We will get there. It's going to take another several months, maybe even till the rest of this year, but keep on it, keep the faith and uh, stay safe as you can. And keep watching the EV marketplace, all kinds of stuff going on. It is a very, very lucrative and fast growing marketplace with all kinds of things. So I hope you stay tuned and I hope that my educating minds one tailpipe at a time with my shows are helping you out. So again, stay safe and until the next show, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.